Well, I guess you could say that my home is still in Tennessee. I still sound like I'm from Tennessee. I grew up there. And my parents and my family still live there. But then I had, I had my home here as well for many, many good years. And now I'm uh, living in West Virginia where, believe it or not, I've been there nine years now. It's been very, very good. So as we, as we journey through life, we will learn this, that it's always good to be home. It's always good to be home. So my message for you this morning is the journey home, the journey home. And I'm going to give you the Bible story to turn to in your Bibles here in just a moment. Before I do that, I want to tell you this. I'm not up here for nothing. Amen? Amen. So I want to know, as I speak and give the message, that this is clear to you and that it is speaking to you and your spirit and your soul. So keep that in mind as we consider this story and the message for today. Bible story. Uh, if you have your Bibles or you can pull it up on your phone. Our Bible story today is Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. We're going to look at uh, verses 11 through 31. Luke 15, 11 through 31. Jesus, at this time in his earthly ministry in his life, he was, he was telling stories. They're called parables. And he would tell stories, and, and those stories would have a spiritual application or a spiritual point. And, and our uh, preaching and teaching style is much like that still today. And in this particular chapter of Luke, he was talking about things that had been lost. So prior to this story, he talked about a lost sheep and a lost coin. And then he told this story. Jesus continued in his teaching where he said, There was a man who had two sons. And the younger one said to his father, Give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, set off to a distant country, and began to squander his wealth through some wild, wild living. Anybody here done any of that? Okay. All right. Just check. All right. So he gets the inheritance. And, and then he goes off. Okay. And he does some wild, wild living. All right. Verse 14. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that country, in that whole country where he was. And he began to be in need. So he went out with his wild living and squandered all his money, and then he began to have need in an area where there was famine. Then the story continues in verse 15. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that foreign country who sent him to his fields to become a feeder of the pigs. And he longed to fill his stomach just with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then, in verse 17, when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. Have any of you been down to your last dime? How am I going to pay for this? Yes. Yeah. How am I going to feed myself and my family? You can relate to that. That's, that's, that's where he was in his life. Down to his last dawn. Couldn't even feed himself. Starving to death. So then he said to himself, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him these words. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. And I'm no longer worthy, even worthy, 
to be called your son. So make me like one of your hired servants. And then the next part of the story begins. Verse 20. He got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, and he threw his arms around him, and he kissed him. And then in verse 21, the son said to his father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to even be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring me the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. and Bring the fattened calf and kill it. And let's have a feast. And celebrate. Why? For this son of mine, who was dead, you thought he was dead, is now alive again. He was lost, and now he's what? Found. Found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, verse 25, the older son was out in the field. So here's the next part of the story. The older son was out in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked him, What is going on? Your brother has come. Come back, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back now safe and sound. The older brother, the older brother, this is what he did. He became angry, and he became mad, and refused to go in. And so his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, look. This is what he said to his father. Look and listen. All these years, all these years, I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet... You never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Verse 30. But when this son of yours, this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes coming home, you kill the fattened calf for him like a prostitute coming home, he said. Your brother. His own brother. My son, the father said to him, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours, but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is now what? Alive again. Amen. He was lost. And now he is found. The journey home. The journey home. In, in this story, in this story, we find many, many things for us to consider and learn. First of all, in the church and the family of God, we are called what in Christ? Can you fill in the blank for me? You're awake. Brothers and sisters in Christ. If we're called brothers and sisters in Christ, that means we are what? Family. family the family of God. So keep that in mind. Sometimes the family of God can be a lot like your family. Y'all like that one, didn't you? <laughs> it can be a lot like your family. It's good to, good to see you here with your family today. This is where you need to be. But it, the family of God can sometimes be a lot like your family. So let's, let's consider these things as part of the message today. In this story, we have the one who left and squandered all that he had, the blessings, and became a beggar. So in 
his situation, he had regrets. And he had desperation. And he had failures. And he had fear. The one who left. But then we find one who never left. Who is feeling forgotten. What about me? I didn't do anything like that. Where's the celebration? Where's the party for me? You're going to love where I'm going with this in a few minutes, okay? <laughs> All right. Then we have the forgiveness of the faithful father of the family. The forgiveness of the faithful father of the family. And so we have failure. We have fear. We have feeling forgotten. And then we have forgiveness of the faithful follower. So I'll say that again because I want you to picture that in this story in your mind. We have failure and fear from the one who left. We have the one who's feeling forgotten, who never left. And then we have forgiveness from the faithful father because finally the lost one who he thought was dead has now been found. So, here's the application to this particular story. Have any of you been lost? Had some failures and fears and regrets in your life and maybe left? Mm -hmm. Where you should have been. Okay. Could be you've done that with your own family. And if you've been a Christian and you wear the name of Christ in your heart and your life, and you, even when you've been baptized, we always have free will, and so we can make that decision to leave our home, the family of God, the church, and I can guarantee you that that will lead to failure and fear. Mm -hmm. Then we have, sometimes, in the family, any of you have, have any of you ever had a little bit of, just a little bit of jealousy in your family? Okay, just a little bit. Hey, what about what about me? Don't forget about me. And so, so the brother who never left, I'm here, I'm doing all this for you, I'm serving you, and then you want to throw a big party and make a big deal out about the one who went away and rebelled and squandered and all of that. Why are you doing that? What about me? We, so you said you had that in your own family, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm setting you up for this sometimes people that have been Christians a long time people that are showing up for weekly church services people that are active in the church can say hey what about me I never left never left the church I've been in the church all my life. I've been serving the Lord all my life. I've never done any of that. What about me over here, sister or brother, whoever you are? Okay? We can sometimes, if you have that mentality, if you've had that issue in your family, sometimes that creeps into the what? Church. Church. The church. Mm -hmm. The family of God. Right. Like, hey, hey, what about me over here? The point of that is, you keep serving the Lord because great is your reward. Amen? You were never meant to leave, but some people do because we have free will and we all make mistakes. And the reason why I'm uh, giving you the message this way and comparing your family to the family of God because if it happens in your own family, Sometimes it's going to happen in the church, in the family of God. Okay? So, but the good news is we have the forgiveness of the faithful father. Who can, the faithful father can do as he wills, can do what he wants, because he's the father of the house. All of these things belong to him. And I decide... 
who I give what to, the blessings I give, I decide. Amen. And even if the one who was lost squandered it all, I gave it to him in the first place. Right. Amen. 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 Amen? I gave it to him, not you as the son. And so, guess who the faithful father in this story is representing for us? Our faithful, forgiving father in heaven who loves you no matter what. Every one of you in this place today can relate to this story in some way. Mm -hmm. If you're a parent, you can relate to the parental side of the story. If you've been faithful to the Lord, and you never left, good, keep doing that, you can relate to that. And some of you in here today have been honest and have been rebellious and have squandered things and have regrets in the past, but you're here today. Amen? Amen. Amen? So that, because of Jesus, you can leave all of that where? In the past. I'm here to tell you today, your family may not forgive you, but Jesus will. Amen. Your friends may not forgive you, but Jesus will. Amen. I was asked today to give the message, the journey home, but also to encourage you, it's time to come back home. It amazes me how many people think and want to be individual Christians out there. Uh-uh. No. That doesn't work. That's not God's design for his church. Last Sunday in West Virginia, I preached on the parable of the lost sheep. Turn to somebody next to you that's asleep and go, back, back. <laughs> You know what happens to a sheep when they go off by themselves? Bad, bad things. They like that in West Virginia too. Bad things. Bad, bad things. You are not supposed to be out there on your own. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Well, why aren't you with the church? The family of God. You go out there on your own, you're going to get ate up. You're going to be just like the son in this story, and you're going to wake up one day and say, what has happened to my life? But you're here today. Somehow, some way. I was talking to some of you this morning, and that's exactly what I said. Somehow we're still here. <laughs> I'm amazed by a lot of you. I'm thankful for a lot of you. The lives that you've lived, the legacy that you have and you will have. Okay? How many of you have a family tree with lots of branches? We know the Smith family does. <laughs> now, and some of us have family trees with some broken branches. Who's going to fix that? Who's going to reach out to them and welcome them home. You need to do that. You need to welcome those who are far away back home. Sometimes they don't want to. Many of you mothers pray and pray and pray and pray for your rebellious children, grandmothers, grandfathers. Don't stop doing that. They got free will. But they will not receive the blessings. So all you can pray is, Lord, keep them alive. Amen. And may one day they come back to me as their family or the church. Because we always have free will. Yes. Yes. But if they do decide to come back to your family or to the church, you better be ready to celebrate. Amen? Amen. 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 Yes. By the way, this is New Testament. It also says that we can dance and sing and party. Okay? All right. Now, I can see all of your faces from up here. <laughs> all right. And we should. And we do. We rejoice. Yes. Yes. 
But you know, the church door swings both ways. Sometimes people go out and they don't come back for a long time. And I've talked to a lot of those people, and a lot of people, a lot of those people will say, well, it's because of some experience I had, or I tried to come back, or I tried to come at all, and I felt judged, or I didn't feel like I was welcome. You all don't have that problem here. Amen? Amen. Not a problem here? No. Anybody who wants to walk through that door is welcome? Am I right on that? What if they have like, um, shout out. Yep, I'm getting ready to shout you out. What if they have purple hair? Are they welcome here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bluish colored hair? <laughs> what if they don't have a, you know, what if they don't have dressy clothes on? You know, I got a, I got a tie on up here, so what? What if they don't smell good? Anybody here? <laughs> what? What, if they, what if they just came off the farm? That's, you know, that's a lot, you know, likely around here, possibly, right? They could have been with the pigs. Come as you are. Thank you. Come as you are, but be ready to leave changed uh, by the Spirit of God. Right? That's the God that we serve. He changes lives. He changes hearts. So here's the gospel. And uh, the family asked me to kind of present that uh, at the service today. But it, it, I'll, I'll present it in a similar way uh, for this message today. Here, here's, here's the gospel, which means good news. The good news is you can receive forgiveness and, and, and salvation and a wonderful new life. And you can leave the past behind. That's the good news. Um, the tough news sometimes is this. You're not, you're not good enough. You're not good enough on your own. Is that, is, do you realize that? Is that all right? Well, it needs to be all right because that's what the Bible teaches. You're not good enough on your own. But the good news is you don't have to be when you give your life over to the Lord. We got a lot of people out there trying to be good enough. Like it. And we can't have that in the church like this goodness competition. I'm gooder than you. Right? We, don't, we don't have to do that in the church. We got enough of that out there in the world. Amen. So, so the, the good news, the gospel is we don't have to be good enough. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3. And so we need forgiveness. We need salvation, and this is the confession you need to make. I believe, I realize now that I, I'm, I'm not good enough on my own. I'm a sinner. There's a lot of things in my past that I can't even fix on my own. So, Lord, I believe that you're real and you can do this for me, and I believe that that power comes through Jesus Christ. There is no other name by which we must be saved. Jesus said in John 14, I, I means me and me only, am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to God except through me. So, so that means that we need Jesus. Jesus to do what? To accept that Jesus died as a sacrifice for your freedom. We appreciate, oh, I was telling Terry Lynn yesterday, we have so many wonderful people here with military service backgrounds, right? And we know what they do and the price that they pay for are what in this country? Freedom. 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 Jesus paid it all. <laughs> all to him I owe. What does that mean? He paid the price for your eternal freedom. So if you like freedom, you're going to get that freedom through Jesus Christ by making that confession. I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he came and he died on that cross to ha allow me to have forgiveness of my sins and a new life with God leading me and Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And so if you haven't made that confession, you need to make that. If you can make it as a prayer and you need to make that confession. Then the Bible tells us that we need to be baptized as well. Why? Because Jesus was baptized 
And the Heavenly Father said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. So first of all, Jesus was baptized. And then in Matthew 28, he said, Go into all the world baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He also said that as you were baptized, we're told, that it represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God. So you need to be baptized. And when you're baptized, the Bible says in Acts that it adds you to the church, the family of God. Amen. We don't vote on it. Oh, I think she's good enough or he's good enough to be in the church. Who does that? Who adds you to the church? God does. And so if you had not done that, you need to do that. And then there's the last part that I hope you'll consider today in some way whether you do it with the church or with your own family, you might need to rededicate your life to Christ because we go away from where we need to be. And here's what I know. You know it. Every one of you. Where you're at with the Lord. If you need to rededicate your life to Christ, you first of all do it for yourself between you and God. But you're not supposed to do it what? Alone. Amen. You need to let somebody know. Let somebody help you. That's right. what the church is. The family of God. Right. And so three things you need. If you haven't done before, you need to realize you're a sinner. Jesus, I need you to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Make that confession. Receive him in your heart even today. Then you need to be baptized. For the reasons that that represents. What we're told to do. Then you need to be added to his church. And then when you become a part of his church. You need to rededicate your life. I don't care if you're the preacher. The elder. The deacon. Amen. The lady who cleans the building. Uh, any age. You need to do that. It's not about self-righteousness. It's about the righteousness of God. And if we're honest with ourselves. Rededication is what allows us to be where we need to be. Amen. The journey home. I'll close with this. One day, you and I will make another journey home. If we are in the Lord. There are two journeys and two destinations after death. No in between. When I came here, my GPS said there's three different ways to get here. <laughs> you know, this way or that way. I'm like, I don't know. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I didn't remember half, you know. The journey in life leads to two destinations. And we're told it's an eternal destination. One is good. One is bad. Really, 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 really bad. <laughs> it's your choice. The journey home. We want your journey home to be a journey home to heaven with the forever, forever family of God. Amen. There are many, many people who have sat in these same pews Amen. that have made that journey. Amen. And your day will come. Amen. I'm glad I don't know when it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> and some of you are taking your sweet time getting there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I, I mean, I had so much fun with that yesterday. I was like, how old are you now? <laughs> Amen. You're that old. Many of you that old. You know how old you are. Okay. You're that old and you're still here. Amen. Serving the Lord. Praising the Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> and then we have some little ones here. That maybe went to the back or out there in the audience. What are we going to do for them? Do for them what was done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. So you ready to sing, Otis? Uh, Otis is already, always ready to sing. So Otis is going to come and lead us in what's called an invitation song, and it's your invitation to respond to the Lord. And I hope you'll do that today. You can do it right there where you're at or 
come down front if you need to receive prayer today. And I encourage you to do that. And also, at the uh, close of the service, I want you to know something. I have... <laughs> I did good. <laughs> I did good talking. <laughs> I got to this point. Tell them where it's at. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell them where it was. <laughs> yeah, back there. Uh -huh. And now it changed into the living room. The signatures of all of Amen. And it says, committed to the cross. That's why we're here. Because of Jesus. And because of that, we have a reason to sing. Now we can sing. <laughs> Let's stand.